Sandy Monroe is going to be here to talk about whether or not the hydrogen technology is still viable, and if so, what the latest advances are, if any. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss Sandy's almost weekly appearances on this channel along with our weekly electric car news moving forward. Now, this is not the first conversation that Sandy and I had about the hydrogen fuel cell technology. Sandy has single-handedly revived a very interesting technology from plasma kinetics by simply mentioning them in our conversation and I had their founder, Paul Smith, on my channel, which caused all kinds of controversy. But a lot of things have changed since then, including Sandy getting a very close look at Nikola's technology a couple of months ago and a very interesting statement by Honda's CEO on hydrogen fuel cell car future, which we'll mention in a second. But before we get to our conversation, of course, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by our new sponsor that I am very much fascinated with, Driven. Finally, there is a company that's taking the training of Tesla drivers seriously. If you are shopping for a Tesla or currently already own one, sign up for a private driven course and let a certified advisor meet up with you and provide a personal experience. You will discover features and driving methods you never knew existed. This month, Driven is offering 20% off. Get yours using the link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy, so we have talked uh, a few times last year about the uh, hydrogen technology. And, you know, we talked about plasma kinetics and all that stuff. And um, now, you know, just very recently, the new uh, uh, Honda, Honda CEO said that they've looked into hydrogen a few years back. They decided that's not a thing. Um, also, Niccolo, as you know, originally was a hydrogen type of a company. And as you just saw a Nikola tray yourself, it is now all battery. Um, is hydrogen technology losing steam this year or, or things are happening behind the scenes? Well, I think that things are happening behind the scenes, but not in cars. Um, I've never been a fan of hydrogen as far as uh, a car is concerned. I just don't think it's the right thing to do. I don't think it's the right way to go. And um, uh, Honda and Toyota and others GM especially put a lot of money into hydrogen vehicles. And to me, I just, I don't get it. But when you start taking a look at things like heavy trucks, class A, anything from a class six to a class eight truck, I think that's got legs. And whether it uses, um, uh, whether it uses the solid state uh, hydrogen, um, uh, or it, or they use bottles or refueling stations. Yeah, I think that the real advantage uh, to, um, or the real advantage for hydrogen would be in the heavy trucks, VTOLs, and I will tell you there's a ton of work going on right now with hydrogen as a fuel for, uh, for heavy aircraft because when you start looking at aircraft, uh, jet aircraft, um, the, they're the biggest polluters on the planet. They, uh, they spew out more garbage than you could possibly imagine. They're terribly inefficient. So, uh, I think that, um, I think that maybe something like that would work for them if they can still get the same speed and, and power and that sort of stuff. Um, but I, I can tell you that, um, Nicola, Yes, they, uh, they are electric vehicles, no question about it. Their electric trucks are working um, out there already. They're, they're out in um, Oxnard and LA uh, docks uh, doing their thing. Um, but I also know that they have the, uh, the fuel cells and, um, and I've seen the battery packs and whatnot and it would, everything tells me that they're, they're gonna go in that direction. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's, that's going to happen. And what about the infrastructure? I mean, that's another thing that I haven't heard much. You know, are we making any progress with that? Um, I have NDAs, so I can't tell you everything I know, but I can tell you for sure that um, there are at least two major stations that I know of 
where um, they would be um, they would be creating hydrogen and then um, shipping it out. Uh, and obviously, one is going to have to be one of the states that probably won't see a lot of hydrogen manufacturing simply because of the rules and regulations and it's just hard to do business in California. So um, that's, that's gonna be a, a state that'll have the stuff shipped into it. But um, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of places where you've got really cheap electricity and that's basically what you need in order to create hydrogen. And uh, I think that uh, unless it's solid state like quantum, uh, uh, it just went. Pla plasma kinetics? Pla plasma kinetics, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, someone like plasma kinetics with, that's making solid state hydrogen, that'll, uh, uh, that's, that's created a lot differently. So that would be another one where, uh, where I, see, I see some opportunities. But I still think that you're looking at, uh, you know, like step van, delivery van kinds of things and uh, big trucks, uh, VTOLs, vertical takeoff uh, craft and, um, and aircraft. I'm not sure how big that would go, uh, but, but I can tell you that um, it, would be, it would be nice if we could get rid of Avgas because it's got lead in it and I, I really think that It'd be great if we could figure out how to get rid of that and uh, and go to some other fuel. So you're saying the industry will be split. Um, consumer cars will be all electric, uh, all battery yeah. powered, and yeah. the heavy industry, you know, will be will be hydrogen, and that's just how yeah. we're going to live. Yes, and that that would probably also include ships. Um, uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of people that we've been talking to that are uh, not in the ship category. So anything like a, around 100 feet or more, that's probably going to be, that'll still be other stuff, but, um, but smaller. And especially if they've got lighter duty, so shorter runs and stuff like that, fishing trawlers, things like that. I can see that as being a, a, a prime way to move um, move fishing trawlers would be with um, hydrogen uh, fuel cells, which convert, of course, into electricity. Now, is that still a struggle between the battery uh, batteries and hydrogen in terms of the you know um, industry uh, transportation? Or do you think it's a sure thing? Like, where are we at with that? Um, is that possible for the, you know, batteries still win? Of course, it's, uh, I, I can see, uh, I can see them in both cases. And it, Again, it all goes back to math. Um, it all goes back to a business case. So if I have short runs, um, I'm not gonna, why should I waste my time with, uh, with, uh, with hydrogen? I mean, if it's a short run, less than, uh, less than four or 500 miles, why, why would I waste my time? Uh, I'll just go with batteries. If they're long haul, uh, now I've got a whole different scenario. I'm not gonna sit there and uh, that's a lot of batteries to fill up and you're not gonna swap those out. But I can swap out the bottles for my hydrogen. I can do that in, in like record time. That, those pop out as fast as you can catch them. So I think, that, uh, I think that it's just a different business scenario. And the business scenario for hydrogen is long haul and the business scenario for batteries is short haul. Now, I think we've all kind of, at least in this niche, kept up with, uh, you know, battery cell chemistry, um, how, you know, it's progressing. We talked about, you know, the 4680s, you know, and, and people understand a little bit more. Um, are there still advances being made in the hydrogen uh, power? And I'm assuming there are. And what stage are they at in terms of being, you know, mass produced? And is there still, I'm assuming there's still room for improvement? Yeah, there's several um, several companies that make um, um, fuel cells, and uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. Some are small enough that I mean they're dinky, an inch square, um, all the way up. And they don't use hydrogen; uh, they would use um, lighter fluid or something like that. So uh, you can you can get uh, you can get fuel sizes fuel cells in all sizes and shapes for any sort of uh, any sort of uh, power requirements. Um, they, they power hospitals. Ballard 
um, we work with Ballard on hospital sized uh, fuel cells. I mean, you can, you can do almost anything and they, they would probably run on natural gas. And then there's, a, but the problem is, is that there's a sludge that's associated with that, that uh, we don't know what to do with. So there's, there's good and bad in everything. Pure hydrogen is the best. And then when you start looking at the fuel cells themselves, there's a ton of different universities that are looking at fuel cells, trying to figure out how we can make that, um, that um, transformation, if you like, from hydrogen, pure hydrogen, to oxygen through uh, the membranes and create enough electrons to run your truck or car or what have you. So there's lots and lots of people working on this. It's just, again, another math problem that will be solved and it'll be solved shortly. Now, explain to my audience, maybe we're making a step back here, but uh, why is it that the <clears throat> fuel cell technology is better for you know planes and ships and industrial types of transportation, but not for just our regular little consumer cars? Uh, they take up, okay, so let's start with cars. It takes up a lot of space. A fuel cell is a very expensive chunk of uh, uh, machinery. Um, you still have to have batteries with it in order to make it work. Um, and uh, remember that stuff you were talking about where, where I said, uh, you know, uh, life is tough. It's tougher if you're stupid. Yes, I and, remember that. Well, uh, hydrogen is not uh, for stupid people. So I think that I cut them out for two reasons. One, I just don't see a business case. And two, I don't want everybody handling hydrogen. So truckers are pretty smart. They, uh, they know what they're doing. Swapping out batter, uh, sorry, uh, hydrogen bottles won't be a big deal for them. They understand their vehicles and, uh, and they understand, you know, what's dangerous and what's not. Those little signs on the back of the truck tell you uh, kind of like which are the smarter truckers. And uh, the ones that are handling things that are really toxic or explosive or just dangerous in, in general, those are the guys that, um, uh, that uh, will jump on the chance of having hydrogen. Because quite frankly, I don't want to sit in a truck that's noisy all the time and makes you go deaf. I don't need the vibration that comes through, um, through the engine. And even though almost all the transmissions are automatic, I still don't need 16 gears. What I'd really like to have is when I'm climbing a hill, I want to have continuous torque. When I'm run that's why there's so many gears in there so that you can down gear, down gear, down gear, and try and get up that hill and down the other side with, with um, uh, fuel cells and batteries, zip, I'm up to the top of the hill. And when I go down the hill, what do I get? Free electricity to go into the batteries. Hey, you know what? This is a real winner. Um, when Corey and I went through the Rocky Mountains um, on that trip that we had in the, uh, in the, in the Model 3, I'm telling you what, <clears throat> nothing makes your heart go pity pad faster then you got to the top of the uh, mountain train. <coughs> <coughs> Hang on. Oh no, I've lost my voice. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Can't okay, be both so, of <clears throat> Yeah, well, it's a little humor. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> anyhow, it, um, you, you get to the top of the hill or the top of the mountain, and now you're going down and you're watching your gas gauge go up or your, uh, your power gauge go up again because you're rolling downhill. That does not happen with a diesel truck. It doesn't happen at all. Mostly what you smell is uh, the brakes. Those brake pads are burning up. And then what have you, well now as a trucker, I'm scared that I'm gonna get a runaway or worse yet, the, uh, the trailer is going to pass me. Okay, I don't want I don't want to see the side of the trailer um, coming through up on my rearview mirror. Okay, so there's a lot of good things that can happen when you've got batteries and fuel cells. So it is just a marvelous uh, a marvelous thing for people who uh, basically deliver almost all the goods that we've got here in the United States. So. I know uh, other people want to sue truckers all the time. I mean, we've got lawyers that come on, did you get hit by a truck? 
call me right away. I'm going to get you lots of money. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, one day they come to the grocery store and find there's none of their special guava juice that they can only get from one place. And, um, and uh, that's because the truckers found out where this guy shops and they don't bring him any guava juice anymore. So <clears throat> I, uh, I'm a big fan of truckers. And I, I can tell you that I, like I, uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of electricity for trucks. It, it's the right way. Big trucks, overland trucks, big fan. Well, I am sure we will have many other conversations on this topic, but for now, don't forget to subscribe to Sandy's channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time, and remember to stay charged. Take it